Welcome once again. Right now we're in Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. The law of Christ. Very, very important point right here. We're going to be reading first through the entire passage of verses 1 through 10, and then we are going to get into it, and we're going to talk about the law of Christ. So don't go anywhere. Let's get right into this. Paul writes, Brothers, even if a man is caught in some fault, you who are spiritual must restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, looking to yourself so that you also aren't tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each man examine his own work and then he will have reason to boast in himself and not in someone else. For each man will bear his own burden. But let him who is taught in the word share all good things with him who teaches. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let's not be weary in doing good, for we will reap in due season if we don't give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let's do what is good toward all men, and especially toward those who are of the household of faith. One mistake that many people do is they take little phrases, little bites here and there out of Scripture, such as this, the law of Christ, and they build a whole theology around one little phrase. Now, this is just one example of many, but here is one good example, the phrase, the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? In order to define the law of Christ, we must define Christ. Who is Christ? The scripture says, especially in John chapter 1, that Jesus is the Word of God. He is the Word of God made in human form. He is the incarnation of the Word of God. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in verse 14 of John chapter 1, it says that the Word became flesh. In other words, the Word, the Word of God, took on human form. And also, in other parts of Scripture, we read that Jesus was involved in the creation of the world. So that's a very important point. Jesus existed before the world was created, and actually, he created the world. Remember, God created the world with words, okay? Let there be light. Let this happen. Let that happen. And it happens. And Jesus is that word. So Jesus is intricately involved with the creation of the world. The point is this, that Jesus existed before the world began. And then throughout the Tanakh, throughout the so-called Old Testament, we read how the word of the Lord came to so-and-so, the word of the Lord came to Moses, the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. What's the word of the Lord? It is Jesus, okay? It is Jesus. Jesus existed and he appeared to these people. Remember, Jesus said in John chapter 8, Abraham saw my day and he was glad. Abraham had a vision of Jesus. And not just Abraham, but all the way back to Abel, Adam and Eve's son, Abel. How did he know to sacrifice? How did he know about sacrifices at all? How did he know to choose a lamb and the firstborn of the lamb? How did he know all that? Because he had a vision of Jesus. Same with all of the patriarchs. They all saw the Lord. David, he saw the Lord very clearly and he wrote about it in the book of Psalms. In fact, he wrote about it as if Jesus himself was actually speaking in the book of Psalms. It is amazing. So Jesus is the word of God. The law of Christ is the law of Jesus, which is the word of God, which is the Torah. The law of Christ is the Torah that we read throughout the Tanakh. And we know this to be the truth because everything that we just read right here in Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 10, reflects the Torah. Let's recap. Verse 1, Paul warns those who are restoring such a one who is caught in sin, lest they also be tempted. 
Then he goes on to say, you know, don't think of yourself to be something when you're nothing. Don't deceive yourself. Can you imagine deceiving your own self? It's one thing to fool somebody else. It's one thing to lie to somebody else and have them believe your lie. But it's another whole thing for to lie to yourself and to believe your own lie. I mean, that's even worse, right? I mean, that's crazy. But what Paul is saying here is humility. And this is the first and foremost principle of the Torah, humility. It says in the Tanakh that we must be humble. God gives grace to the humble, but opposes the proud. It says in the book of Micah that God requires us to walk in humility. It says in the book of Numbers, chapter 12, that Moses was the most humble man in all the earth. Think about that for a second. The most humble man in all the earth. What a statement that is. Can you imagine meeting the most humble man in all the earth? Wow. One of the greatest virtues in Torah is humility. And then if we were to go down here to verse 6 through 10, we see how Paul emphasizes the importance of communication with your teacher and also a warning, don't be deceived because God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you will also reap. This is also a Torah concept. If you sin, you will pay for it. And then finally, Paul talks about being good to those. It says, especially toward those who are of the household of faith. Again, this is a Torah concept that you need to really love your neighbor as yourself, especially those who are part of the faith. This is something that is clearly taught in the Torah. So the law of Christ is the law of Abel, the law of Abraham, the law of Noah, the law of Moses, the law of David. It is the law. God is not a hypocrite to have two different kinds of laws, three different kinds of laws. He doesn't have multiple personalities here. He doesn't have double standards here. He's not two-faced, okay? He is consistent throughout the generations. Jesus is the same yesterday. The days of Abel, the days of Abraham, the days of Moses, the days of David. Today, he's the same and forever he's the same. He says in Malachi, I am the Lord. I change not. He doesn't change and likewise, his law will never change because he will never change because the law is a reflection of the lawgiver. Until next time, seek God with all your heart and if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.